it moving. Our third participant is Louis Brigoni from Winwood Brewing Company. Louis, where are you? There he is. All right. All oh, right. So how's everybody doing today? Yeah, good, right? Um, so my name is Luis. I am from uh, Winwood Brewing Company down in Miami, Florida. Um, so to kind of talk about our brewery, not talk about our neighborhood, really doesn't do us any justice. So I'm going to touch a little bit about our neighborhood. Um, so we're actually Miami's first craft brewery since the 1960s. Um, our neighborhood, which is Winwood, it's the Arts District. Uh, and in actually this time of year, it's actually really nice for us. Uh, our basil that happens in Miami Beach kind of trickles over into Wynwood. And as you see one of the photos there, all the walls really transform into beautiful works of art. And we have some of the world's most renowned graffiti artists that come and do these beautiful murals. And a lot of what we do at Wynwood, uh, the brewery, is we really try to take a lot of our neighborhood as an inspiration. So you'll see in the next slide, our tap handles are made of uh, hand turned by a local wood turner, and they look like spray paint cans. Um, the Pop Sporter, which I'll talk in a little bit, uh, has to do a lot with my father. So we're a family owned and operated a brewery uh, in a Puerto Rican neighborhood. When was actually also, before it became a hip, cool place, was actually a Puerto Rican barrio. We're a family from Puerto Rico, so it kind of felt like home when we first came into, uh, into Wynwood. Um, so we opened in 2013, uh, in August. So last year was our first full year, and we did uh, 1,800 barrels. Uh, this year we'll hopefully, you know, we finish December strong. We'll do about 3,300 barrels. And then next year we're forecasting to hopefully reach 5,000 barrels. Um, we were 100% draft until um, September of this year, so now we have package, which the judges are trying right now. We, uh, we bottled two of our beers. Um, now, one of the things that I try to do a lot is kind of incorporate a lot of local partnerships uh, with our brewery. So we've done a lot of really cool stuff with, uh, with uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, local also uh, restaurant, mom and pop restaurant that's franchising now called uh, Pincho Factory. Uh, and that's really helped our business a lot. Um, we try to stay, 80% of our production stays within our county. So we really try not to send a lot of beer outside of our backyard. Um, and four of our cores, so we do four cores. Uh, one of them is La Rubia, which is our American Blonde Ale. We kind of try to tie, Miami is literally like 80, 90% Hispanic. Um, I would say Spanish is probably the first language in Miami. If anybody's ever been, I think you can relate. Um, so we try to do, incorporate again La Rubia, which means the Blonde Ale. Now that's actually our flagship. Um, we do about 48% of our total production is La Rubia. Right behind that is Pops Porter. Um, Pops is uh, named after my father. Um, who actually co-founded the brewery with me. And it was actually the GABF gold medal winner in 2014, so it was, we're really proud of, of that beer. Um, after Pops, we do Magic City, which is our pale ale. And then we also do our IPA. And then after that, we had a couple seasonals. Um, monthly limiteds, we do a shipwreck series, which is a barrel age series. Um, and that's about it, that's all I got. So what you guys are drinking <laughs> is uh, Pops Porter. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the beers that I brewed in the back alley in Wynwood. I actually lived in Wynwood before. So, um, so anyways, yeah, it's our, it's our, it's one of the, I'll keep talking. <laughs> all right, I'll call it, oh, I'm sorry. All right, all right. So Pops Porter and uh, Wynwood Brewing, what do you guys think? We'll start with Carmen. Um, so I, I've actually been to Wynwood, and it's, uh, it's amazing there. I love that neighborhood, and there's a really great story to tell. And I think that you guys start to tell that story on packaging. I think that the handle is a great representation of that. Like, it maintains your brewery sort of roots um, and also helps tell the story of, of the neighborhood. I think that you guys can get even closer, and the fact that you are all Puerto Rican-owned, I think, um, lends itself to it well. So things like La Rubia and... and um, some Hispanic and Latino sort of inferences, I think will will help you get even further. Thank you. 
And, and some pretty good scale, Tommy, I'll jump over to you. I mean, you know, pretty early on, uh, demonstrating ability to, to grow quite rapidly, get into packages in the first, you know, year and a half or so. Um, you know, that's something that a, a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. Um, you know, what do you see as like sort of the next biggest challenge uh, from, from this point? Well, I mean, I, I think that one of the things that's pretty clear these days is that Miami and Florida in particular is a kind of a wide open territory for, for local beer. Right. So there's a huge opportunity to run at it. The question is, is what's going on? I was half expecting to see some sense of a uh, Berliner Weiss beer coming out of the Miami brewery because that's the Florida Weiss of the, of the world. So um, happy we'll do a to see seasonal. a porter. <laughs> Happy to see it a porter instead, um, only in so much as I, just the, the notion that that's where it would have gone. Um, I had one question for you briefly sure. of the four cores. Why does the IPA not have a, a Latin or a, a sort of Puerto Rican reference in the naming? Um, you've deviated off that, and I think it's a pretty significant departure, so I was just curious. Um, I mean, we, kind of, we had, had originally a name, and we were kind of running into trademark issues, so we just named it Winwood IPA. That's <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Michael, how about uh, you know incorporating the uh, the spray cans as tap handles? Um, you know, clearly that ties back to the the locale that they're in. Yeah. But does that translate well enough if, if somebody hasn't been there before? Uh, yes and no. I think for, uh, just on first blush, I mean, I'm already familiar a little bit with Winwood and sort of its situation, and so I think the arts theme that comes through is utilized really smartly in some ways. I think it works really well on the on the bottle labels. Like I get what that's about um, on the exterior package of the six pack. Uh, a few of us were confused as to what that object was. It sure. looked like a water tower to me. I didn't get spray can mm -hmm. whatsoever. And I think as soon as you said spray can, I was like, oh, and then I thought about Sam Adams spray can. Uh, and so I think that's just kind of, a, it's a hard thing to own. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also a hard thing to translate. Um, not everybody's, I guess, that familiar with it. And it, I, I think it, looking like it's made out of wood abstracts right. you from that so far that you kind of don't know what it is. Um, but I, I, like the, I, I like the use of color in the way you're doing it on here. I think that literally pops. I think that's pretty cool looking. Um, I think the, maybe the, the work of art in every glass thing, I think playing to that location is smart. I'll just be aware of laying it on a little thick uh, right. and making it seem like that's all you're about because at some point your brand is going to transcend that area right. and you need to be able to live outside of it and that's going to be hard. Awesome. All right, we're just over time. Thank you. Please. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, so now we are going to announce the winner of the Startup Brewery Challenge. Uh, Carmen, I think if you can come up here. We have a microphone we can grab for Carmen maybe as well. Um, so the judges go off. They deliberate. Uh, you know, I, I think I saw them huddled up over here earlier today talking about the pros, the cons, the positives, the negatives, um, you know, what every single company brought to the table. Um, these are still new companies just figuring it out. Carmen, you know, what were you guys, I, I wasn't there, but what were you guys talking about in the deliberation process? So um, we were talking a lot about what it is specifically that we're looking for. Um, these guys are, they put a lot on the table and without having really clearly defined criteria around what it is that, that we want them to exhibit. So. Kudos to you guys, hats off. I know that it's really hard to get up in front of a group of people to share the passion that you have in, in this project that you're working on. So great work to all of you, first of all. And beyond that, we talked about what it, um, you know, what it was that we were looking for. And um, you know, for, for CBA specifically, we're looking for a few different things. Um, you know, Michael has talked about this before, but um, good beer is really just a ticket to the game. So the beer has to be good, and that's true um, for any of the new breweries who are starting up. So obviously great beer, but beyond that, we're looking for um, breweries who have a really solid story and the people and the place um, and all of the things that it takes to back that up. So, um, you know, Simon said it really well today, like you have to know who you are. And so if I could say it succinctly, I would say that we're looking for breweries who know who they are. Right. And... I think the real goal, um, you know, at least when we started this thing, you know, five times ago, uh, was really to identify someone that could truly benefit from the opportunity to go up there and, you know, just spend time with you guys learning. Um, it, like, was there a brand or two that really stuck out in your mind of, this is someone who's going to benefit from three days with us that we can actually help? 
Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. You know, um, there I think there's a distinction between um, breweries who are starting out and maybe too small to even know what questions to ask. When Braxton was with us in September, it was fantastic because they came with just you know a journal full of questions to talk to our QA team about, to our marketing team about, our operations team. So um, too small, and maybe it doesn't make sense for you to gain all of the benefit that you could gain. Um, too big and too established, and you sort of you know know what you're doing, and you're already going down your path. So, um, you know, Highlander stood out as a brand that had been established, um, had been contract brewing for a while, and maybe wouldn't benefit as much from some of our expertise um, relative to some of the other, um, some of the other candidates. So um, definitely looking at the established, you know, how established some of those breweries are. All right. So uh, let's do the big reveal then, now that uh, we know yeah. some of the selection criteria. Um, this will be a surprise for me as well. Uh, I don't know, is there like a drum roll or I something so, that has yeah. to happen? <laughs> uh, and the winner of the 2015 Startup Brewery Challenge is? I'm happy to announce it oh. is Winwood Brewing. Winwood Brewing. Oh. All right. <laughs> awesome. Where's, uh, where's Luis? Yeah, come on up here. So Luis, we, we were really nice um, job, excited about about Winwood. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we felt like there was a really great balance between um, this solid foundation in the story that you had to tell. The beer was fantastic. Um, there was a real sense of place and this thread that was woven through it with the, the heritage of, of your family and the ownership. Um, and we also felt like there was some room for us to give you some coaching with regards to packaging and um, as you're scaling up, we have an amazing QA and brewing and operations team that can really offer some, some solid advice around that. So we felt like you were a terrific candidate. Awesome, thank yeah. you. Awesome, man. Appreciate well, congratulations. It. Big round of applause. So, uh, Luis will head off to Portland, Oregon at some point uh, next year and learn from everybody up there, spend a couple days. Um, if we can tag along, that'd be awesome. Would love to document your experience. Congrats. Thank you, uh, thank you all for joining us here today, and um, hopefully we see you next time. Official dates for our 2016 events uh, will be announced soon, so stay tuned, and uh, let's go have a beer. Cheers. Cheers.